Jim Davis is playing Bug Delver, and game number three will be underway here with an Ancestral Vision being well, suspended. This is a fair match. I remember Bug Delver is not as tempo-oriented as Rug Delver, and this is a match that Kevin Jones probably wants to be fighting again. Uh, he's on the play. As we go late in this game, Jim won't be able to keep up with the card advantage that Jones has. You even see he's suspended to turn one Ancestral Visions. That's more card advantage than Bug has in the whole list. To Delver's secrets to start things off here for Davis. Jones is going to take that Visions down to three. You see next to their name a nine next to Jones and 11 next to Davis. Both these players had two buys coming into this tournament. So they did win round number three, and we'll see who does win round number four here as Jones is going to now play on his second turn. We will see in just a moment. It looked like it may have been a death right shaman. Maybe a thought sees there, but he's going to unwind for just a moment, reconsider his options. Yeah, remember, tapping lands is a reversible action, so that's an <laughs> undo that you can do. Yep. He'll do it off a basic swamp, and he will cast a disfigure, get Delver off of the table. I imagine the plan here for Jones is, let me keep my opponent's you know, board clear. Kill so, things. Yeah, so this Visions resolves on an empty board. Here's a thought sees. Kill things, kill things, kill things. Um, if possible, Jones would like to play around days for the entire game mm -hmm. because then you've, and I'm going to use the term loosely, you have killed the days in his hand. Um, you see right now he's exposing the thought sees to a days because it's early enough in the game that he wants the extra tempo. Jim is going to cash in the card as soon as he can. And I think if you're Jones, you're okay with that exchange because Jim has set himself back on lands. Yeah, he set himself back, and you have this ancestral visions ticking away. So anything, all you have to do right now is survive. That's kind of the shardless bug plan. You know, survive, and eventually you'll win. And if your opponent is the back to one land, surviving is a lot easier. Visions will take down to two. Jones will draw a card. We'll see what Kevin can put together here this game. He's off to a pretty nice start. Misty Rainforest will be his third land. Let's see if he has something like a shardless agent, or maybe a Liliana the Veil to cast this turn pretty good board to do so. If he does have to worry maybe about Stifles, I think the Stifles would still be left in in Jim's deck. Oh, I think so. Remember that when that Ancestral Visions comes off Suspend, if Jim has a Stifle, he can Stifle the trigger that lets Kevin cast it. And then it stays over there forever. Right. And if he has on it, that, that will probably be where your first counter war will be fought. I actually think that's part of the reason that Jim has to leave it in, just because of that period. Just that interaction. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to win through a bonus three cards. Davis draws a card for the turn. Looked to be a Tarmogoyf. You can see a Verdant Catacombs in this hand. So he does have a second land to play. Jones' turn was relatively simple. Just a copy of Deathrite Shaman before passing it back over to Davis. Davis has been one of the players who's actually been grinding the IQ circuit or the Open Series circuit, taking advantage of the ability to do that out in the New York area. He will sacrifice a Verdant Catacombs down to 19. There's a trop. Maybe it's time to deploy that Tarmogoyf. We will see. He does have an Abrupt Decay in his hand as well, does Davis. Again, mostly known for playing Goblins. Had to play it last weekend. Didn't have a great weekend with it, but it switched over to Bug Delver. And you see there are some cards that Jim... Jim has another method of interaction here. He does have some trumps in his hand. He does have cards like True Name Nemesis. Mm -hmm. So he can stick one of those and hope that Kevin doesn't have... just doesn't have a way to kill it. But Charlotte's Bug is usually pretty good at dealing with True Name. Has a lot of cards like Golgari Charm and Toxic Deluge. Abrupt Decay takes down the Shaman, but the Visions is ticking down. It's down to one right now. Let's see what this is going to be for Jones. That's a copy of him to Torak. So going to go after Davis's hand, or at least try to. Well, Kevin's got to be pretty happy that Jim spent his turn Abrupt to King a Deathrite Shaman. Remember I said, Kevin's strategy here is, like I said, to survive. And when your opponent is tapping out to answer your things, well, then you're certainly surviving for that turn. You know, there's, there's nothing on Jim's board. So it gives Kevin a window to cast something like him to Turok. Five will take care of that one. And three will take care of that one. Let's see what goes to the bin here for Davis. Tarmogoyf and Shrini Nemesis. Two pretty good hits. Yes, absolutely. As you see, another Daze just still left in Jim's hand. Yeah, the shelf life on Daze in this matchup seems to go relatively quickly. Wasteland, the draw for the turn. And when your opponent has a Visions coming off Suspend, Wasteland sure does look pretty unappealing. Yeah, we're going to see if Jim has the stifle for that Ancestral Visions. If he does, he's going to have to do it right 
right now. I don't think he can afford to have, Kev, if at all possible, to have Kevin draw these three cards. Wasteland's going to take care of the underground sea, and it's going to be big right now. Does he have the stifle or not? Looks like he has a daze, and I don't know what that other card is. Yeah, there's a daze, a, de a decay, and kind of a mystery in the middle. He's going to cast daze, floating a mana. And it's going to divert. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. my. So this could be a radical change oh, here. Oh, my goodness. That was beautiful. I thought that Daze was dead. That Daze just made this turn great as Davis is the one drawing three cards. Now the Wasteland makes sense. It all makes sense now. Really good setup by Davis there. And he wouldn't have even been able to do it if it wasn't for that Wasteland. Yes. And now he draws another copy of Wasteland. Now, Jones doesn't have a non-basic just yet, but he might be working his way there. I thought wow. Davis was in some serious trouble. Well, if he doesn't have, <laughs> if he doesn't have the divert there, um, I would say that this would, you know, it would be real hard for Jim to play this, but we're playing a different game now. There is a trap, and that's a death right. I'm not even sure how many cards are left in Cap Jones's hand. Outside of that him to truck, Jones hasn't created much card advantage this game, so he's got to be pretty low. Jones is going to sacrifice that Misty Rainforest. Yeah. Jim is successfully hiding the Wasteland that's in his hand. Yeah, beautiful job. Yeah, so to be fair, the Swamp is the old. That one Swamp actually is the only basic in Kevin Jones's deck. Sure. So we'll, hiding it doesn't actually do too much. I mean, the, car, the landing gets will be able to be Wastelanded. There's a Brainstorm. Yeah, Kevin's going to have to start again in trying to get that card advantage going. Now, this deck is capable of catching back up. That's for sure. Right. There's still some urgency on Jim's side to deal some damage. Yep. Both players sitting here at 19 life. Jones is going to resolve this brainstorm. We'll have to put a couple cards back. Now, among the cards he did draw, there was a Wasteland there. So we could have, you know, this kind of mana denial game. But, you know, how good is a Wasteland when your opponent just drew three cards and has death right in play? Well, we will find out. Jim would love to get in a Wasteland war here. Like you said, he has more cards in hand. He has a death rate. He also doesn't have as nearly expensive of a deck as far as mana costs is. So Jones puts two cards back. Brainstorm will resolve. Untap those two lands and take a draw. Of course, he will know what this card is. And it looks like he's going to fire up Abrupt Decay here. So there's that. Yeah, there are three cards in Kevin's hand, four in Jim's, so it's not... Kevin's only down one card right now. So things aren't actually that bad. He is in a lot of danger of getting color screwed at the moment, mm -hmm. and that death fight was a pretty big draw for Jim. So yeah. he's not out of the woods, but he's still at 19 on a relatively clean board. Who's going to be able to cobble their way back into this one? That's the question. Is Jones just going to pass after playing Misty Rainforest? Davis will draw a card. Davis has lands. You can see him. He just drew a copy of Disfigure. Right. And this is where Bug Dubber is in a little bit of an awkward spot in this matchup. Is you see that Davis is playing cards like Disfigure and Abrupt Decay, which those are cards that Kevin's playing as well. And in this matchup, they're a lot better in Kevin's strategy than in Jim's. Jim doesn't, Kevin doesn't care about his own creatures. Yeah. Feel free to disfigure my Baleful Strix or my Charlotte's Agent after I've gotten cards from them. Right. It's, I mean, do you know, like, you can even disfigure a Deathrite Shaman. Kevin will be sad, but he won't be heartbroken about it. Like, mm -hmm. you still just traded one for one, which is what he wanted to do in the first place. You see Kevin kind of grab his Mr. Rainforest and say, I'd like to sacrifice that. Is that okay? And, you know, I imagine he saw Stifle. Right. At one point in this match, you know, we're joining this match in progress, game number three. And you see Kevin's rebuilding. He looks like he's going to make a Baleful Strix here. Mm -hmm. And this is, remember, he was only down one card last time we checked. So this is, this doesn't, you know, he'll still be down a card, but suddenly he'll have a Baleful Strix in play. And you see he's going to build back up on that card advantage. And, and if I were to bet here, I would say Kevin is still ahead on this board just because of what's in their libraries. Yeah, I think so. So Kevin's going to draw a card. Yeah. He's looking to get to three mana. The reason for that is because he has a Charlotte's Agent in his hand. Right. It's like, do you want to disfigure this Baleful Strix? Yeah, that's that's fine. You know, Jim's not dealing damage. And if you don't deal damage to the Charlotte's Bug player, they eventually are going to start two for wanting you. I can't imagine he'd be too thrilled about it. There's a Wasteland. Great draw for Davis. Uh-huh. Fire off again. I think, yeah. I, I like Jim's play here of not disfiguring. No real reason to. 
as Jones has to pass the turn back, Davis is going to go to work. The only reason you'd need to disfigure would be if you wanted to attack for some damage, but there's so many spells in the yard that that death rate's never going to run out of targets. So attacking is just worse than dealing two every opportunity. So the Bistrix isn't doing anything. There's no reason to kill it. If you ever do draw something like a Tarmogoyf, Jim can disfigure it then. Mm -hmm. Jones has to pass it back. Deathrite Shaman's going to go to work again, playing its best Grim Lava Mancer impersonation. So away goes another card here. And those Wastelands have been timely for Davis. It's interesting. Even if that Deathrite Shaman were a Grim Lava Mancer, it would probably be doing the exact same thing. Davis probably wouldn't even be killing the Strix. Brainstorm was the draw, and that's a pretty good card to cast. So Davis will go three cards deeper into his deck. Yeah. Set two back. With a good enough draw here, James could put the game out of Davis could put the game out of reach. Dark Confident was one of the cards he found. And that can really let him continue to push his push his advantage now. Yeah, you have to assume that the confidant is safe, at least to one black. If Kevin Jones had a disfigure, it would have hit the death right long ago. Mm -hmm. Davis able to sculpt his hand, and it's questionable whether or not Kevin's gonna be able to cast the spells in his hand before he's dead. Davis is getting a clock going. Jim methodical with his brainstorm, but he is happy with his configuration now. He will sacrifice the Scalding Tarn, go down to 17, and search up a land here. So Dark Confidant, not a traditional card that you see in Bug Delver, but it's gaining some, some traction here. How, as I think as we get to a more mid-range meta game, we're going to see more Dark Confidants. I think Jim with a full three in his main deck this weekend. Yeah, staring uh, three right back at us. Again, his creatures, four death rights, four Delvers. No secret there, along with the four Tarmogoyfs. Three Dark Confidants, then two copies of True Name Nemesis. And there's a Bayou off the top, and that's timely because Abrupt Decay looks pretty nice here. Yeah, I don't think you can give Jim extra cards. No, no, no. Remember, Kevin just needs to survive. And he's still hanging tough on defense. I don't love to hang tough on defense. It feels like he's missing points of damage here. Well, yeah, I don't mean it's not defending from anything. Yeah. The Death Threat's not going to attack. Granted, I don't think Jim's life total is particularly relevant. I mean, there is the opportunity to get in a racing situation if, you know, Tarmogoyf show up to the party, as Davis is going to cast a Ponder. Right. Looking at a Ponder, a Daze, and a Fetch Land here is Davis. That Fetch Land is Flooded Strand. So what I would say is, he's, if, I would actually like hanging back the Strix. He doesn't want to give Jim the option of swinging for one. If he truly thinks that Jim's life total doesn't matter, like, when Kevin wins, he'll win by having such an overwhelming board that he'll just grind Jim out of the game. If, that, if he just thinks that that is how all of these games end, then holding back Strix is probably right. Just take away the option. You saw Jim keep up the ponder. He actually drew the daze for the turn. Feeling the daze is actually on now. Another Baleful Strix drawn for Jones. And now he's coming in for one. But he has an abrupt decay at the ready to take care of the death right shaman, so he's able to attack for one now. And he sh does, should abrupt decay now so that Jim doesn't get another opportunity to do it if he's going to make that play. Ooh, Jim risky. Will yeah, it's risky. Maybe it, it does give him more options. Maybe Jim plays something better. But it does mean he's taking two additional damage. Yep. There's a ponder. And That's going to resolve. One thing I remember about, so the one, like I've, I've played Charles Bug once in a tournament. Um, <laughs> There's not actually much life gain in the deck. Death Rate Shaman's it. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting low on life points, you actually have to turtle up a, more than you would want to. You know, a lot of these control decks have the option of, oh yeah, Sword's my own guy, or they have, you know, they have plays that let them gain life, but really not true for Shardless Bug. It's just Death Rite. Davis kept with the Ponder, drew the Thought Seize. Now he's going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn to go search up a land. So Tropical Island is what he's going to go grab. You know, it is conceivable, too, that Jones might be a little afraid to cast a Rupticay on this board in the face of a Divert. He could take down the Baleful Strix. How many Diverts... Here's a question. How many Diverts do you think your opponent put in his sideboard? That's a pretty good question. Like, my answer would be, like, like how crazy is, is your opponent, right? Here's a Thought Seize. Relevant of this to this thought sees is that Jim taps his last black mana uh -huh. here. So he can't shock in response. He, he can, can gain life. Yep. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna gain two life. And now here's the thought sees. Now we get to see the grip. And the hand presumably is a good one. You gotta go Gari Charm. There's a Baleful Strix, a Shardless Agent, and a Liliana. So as Davis does record this information, he'll, of course, get to select a card. Oh, 
All right. And with the death right shaman that did die this turn for Davis, he did exile a death right shaman in Jones's graveyard. So that's how so, he was able to gain the life. And a lot of, a lot of heavy hitters. That's what you'd have to expect in the shardless deck. So rather than taking one of these, this Liliana or the shardless, it looks like he's gonna just gonna instead hope that Kevin doesn't top deck the land. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget, he does have a daze in his hand, too. So you know, by, by taking the cheaper oh. spell, you're actually going to make your daze better against Liliana and Charlotte's Agent, maybe itself, or depending on what it cascades into. Yeah, a better point, one that I hadn't realized right away, is that Kevin didn't have the blue mana mm -hmm. there either. All now, right. There's a Verdant Catacombs off the top, so he's got it now. Right. There's a Spell Pierce and a daze in Jim's hand, so he's got some time. But his clock's gone. Yeah, he needs to find a way to actually start dealing some damage now. He's got a lot of reactor spells in his hand. You see the Disfigure, the Daze, the Spell Pierce. Some pretty good cards in hand. Jones is going to play a Charlotte's Agent. It's time to Cascade. We'll see what he finds here. It's a copy of Brainstorm, and uh, I think we might have some fighting now. Yeah, I think he's gonna, he might, he's gonna fight over one half of that. Jim might have to fight over both halves. Mm -hmm. It's a hard cast Daze in the Brainstorm. Cannot let that resolve. Might be okay with the Agent, though. Yeah, he's staring at it. Well, yeah, if, decay he, and a disfigure. if he wasn't okay with the agent, he probably would have pierced the brainstorm and then dazed the agent. An interesting draw for Jim this turn. He drew a copy of brainstorm, and I was curious if he was going to cast it or not. But he actually held steady. You think he might just kill all of Kevin's things? Yeah. He, he wants. He needs to hang on to that abrupt decay because he knows Kevin has Liliana. Yep. Now he's got spell pierce for that if he wants to. I mean, how does he want to use his resources? That's the question here. Right. Which. In a vacuum, which spell would he, does he want to have left over in his hand? Yep. So here's Liliana. That's got to be. He could yep. not pierce it quicker. Nope. He knows that land five would make his spell, turn his spell pierce off, probably for the rest, possibly for the rest of the game. Jones suspends the visions, and Jim knows the last card in Jones's hand, which is Golgari Charm. So now he can move forward appropriately with not only Brainstorm, but this Ponder as well. So he will cast Ponder, look at a Brainstorm, a Deathrite Shaman, and a Tarmogoyf. Now he's finally found his clock. Yeah. And he knows the card in his opponent's hand. Great situation for Davis, but I mean, he's he's got under a clock here, right? So he has his opponent at nine, sure, but his opponent has a Baleful Strix in play, and on top of that, he has an Ancestral Visions ready to come off. Unless Jim has another Divert coming up and some counter magic, you know, this one, Kevin, this one, this one, Kevin will get to draw the cards off of. I think the goal is to get him dead before that does happen. Now, let's right. not forget, Davis does have an Abrupt Decay in his hand to take care of that Baleful Strix, so he does have an answer to that annoying one-one flyer, and then he does have a Brainstorm to kind of reload and potentially hide that abrupt decay if he needs to. And that Tarmogoyf, as you can see, that's a large one. That's a 6 7. Add a great draw for Jones, a Tarmogoyf of his own. Mm -hmm. Davis will draw a card. It's a copy of Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, great draws here for both players. Jim can use Deathrite to go to work on Kevin's life total as well. I think originally Jim was hoping to play Tarmogoyf, abrupt decay the Baleful Strix, and then swing with Goyf and get six damage in. That's why he kept, drew the Tarmogoyf instead of drawing the Deathrite Shaman that last turn. It turns out now he, he lost a little bit of damage. But somebody found a second copy a second of Abrupt, Abrupt, Abrupt Decay. Decay. And so now he could put a really, really nice turn together here. Abrupt Decay Disfigure. So there's Deathrite. Right. No, no, Disfigure is gone. So yep. he's going to go Goyf and another Deathrite. And so the last card is hand right now is Abrupt Decay. And he can follow up by going Decay your guy, Decay your guy, and try to kill you. Yeah. The top card of his deck is a second Abrupt uh -huh. Decay. Let's see what this draw was. That's another Tarmogoyf for Kevin Jones. Kevin is matching Davis draw for draw here. Well, he's certainly trying to. Now, let's not forget one thing here, Matthias. You see Kevin Jones' mana base only has one green mana, and that's tapped. So that Golgari Charm in his hand, not going to get the job done. Now, here's a big-time attack. Abrupt to get both your Tarmogoyfs and attack here. You can't G-Charm anything. Yes, my Tarmogoyf will trade with your Baleful Strix, but you take seven, put you two. down to two, and I have a Deathrite Shaman in play, and I know one of your cards? Yeah, I don't think there's a draw that saves him here. He needs to kill the Goyf and the Deathrite before the untap. It's Shardless Agent into a Cascade. <laughs> All right, here's Shardless That's Agent. step one. All right. So you can do it. That oh, is step wow. two. All right, still okay. alive. Still alive. <laughs> that's that's filthy. All Davis right. draws a copy of Brainstorm. So so draw, Jones's last draws have been a goif, a goif, and then <laughs> the cascade into what he needs to cascade into. All right, Davis is going to resolve this brainstorm. He's got to put two cards back, and actually yes, the card is a stifle. There's an attack. There's a block, obviously, and he gets to stifle it's this beautiful. ancestral vision. Yeah, that's going that. It's going to go ahead and yeah, Jim it. says, absolutely not. You do not get to do that. I know the card in your hand. It's a G-Charm. You have to peel on me again. 
Yeah, it just remains in exile. There's suspend works that when you remove the last suspend counter, there's a trigger that allows you to cast it, and that is a stifleable trigger. And Jones couldn't do the <laughs> couldn't top deck again. Finally gives in. My goodness, Jim Davis wins one heck of a game three over Kevin Jones, two games to one. Bug Delver takes down Charlotte's Bug, and Jim Davis is off to a 4 0 start. What a game. Yeah, a great game there. One that really I thought was going to go the way for Charlotte's Bug, but Jim was able to use Wastelands to keep him off correct mana just long enough to put together some. A lethal, a lethal board. It's hard not to smile after that for Jim Davis. One heck of a win. That divert really changed well, things 